Lou in Miami. He writes in, Hey, Metafork, longtime listener, first time caller, with the release of the final album for this incarnation of Swans, The Glowing Man. And because you guys said they were one of your favorites, I was wondering how you all felt about the various incarnations of Swans throughout the years. Is uh, everything equally worth checking out? And uh, just a reminder real quick, if you've got a question, you can email us, metaphorkmusic at gmail. Dot com. So I, I'm i probably the biggest uh, Swans fan of the three of us, right? So I, I guess I'll, I'll give a you know quick little history. Swans, it's basically just Michael Girard and a revolving cast of characters. The only other person that's been around forever is uh, Norman Westberg. He's on every album except for one. Uh, he plays guitar. So they start out as like just the hardest uh, no wave band ever. I mean, uh, public castration is a good idea. Has to be the like most brutal album ever recorded. It's a live album. Uh, then they kind of move on to like a almost folky kind of uh, undertones with uh, Children of God, uh, White Life from the Mouth of Infinity, and then uh, Gerard decides to end the band. He's he says he's tired of having to rely on just like crushing sound because the the band has built up such a reputation of uh there's stories of people like puking because uh, the show is too loud which i think that's probably bullshit um but it's it's a good story and uh you know just the shows were just brutal not only the sound but Jira would like step on your hands if you put him on stage pull your hair if you were uh head banging uh, he's gotten in many fights with people uh, so he's kind of tired of all that he wanted to end it so he makes one final album uh which is like just this post-rock masterpiece soundtracks for the blind uh, he does one final world tour and then ends the band and uh, he starts a new band the angels of light which are much more folk oriented and uh pretty awesome so uh chuck them out and uh then 2010 out of kind of nowhere he decides uh he's reigniting swans and they release uh my father will guide me up a rope to the sky uh which is a good album but it kind of kind of nobody really talks about it until the seer in 2012 this started this uh trilogy of just albums that are pushing two hours or uh i think a couple of them are maybe even a little bit over and that is the current incarnation of Swans, which he says will end after The Glowing Man. He says after that, it's going to be back to a revolving cast of characters and uh, much less emphasis on touring. So uh, we got The Seer and To Be Kind and now Glowing Man. So uh, since you guys weren't quite as familiar, we, we looked back at uh, three albums that are um, – kind of the pinnacles of each of these uh moments uh filth which is their first album super new way or no wave and then soundtracks for the blind the uh last album um and then the seer the first of that trilogy so um i guess we'll start with filth and uh what did you guys think what are your uh your previous experiences with this album if any so i like probably the majority of swans fans nowadays um really discovered them with the seer i uh, gotta admit and um you know found it very punishing and not my favorite thing to listen to you know until i really sat with it for a long time to be kind like again like most people was sort of immediately amazing uh, and gave me a new desire to really dive back into their discography so you know i had listened to filth before you know for this we just i, I decided to give it sort of a closer listen and you know if we're trying to figure out you know is there anything connecting all of these different incarnations and all of these different vibes you know can we even consider it the same band or what you know i honestly do think that you can hear the seeds of something like to be kind in filth i mean filth is just a lot more abrasive and punishing but that like hypnotic kind of repetition that to me is at the core of swans uh is really the main thing there do you guys agree with me at all yeah i mean f but the thing is like filth has all that uh repetition and that's increasingly obvious uh in the new inc incarnation of swans uh, especially to be kind but that middle period it really kind of loses that so if anything i kind of think they're like two bands split uh with you know 15 or so years like in between 
uh, or I guess 20 years in between, which is kind of weird. How how'd you feel about it, Darren? Um, so I think, you know, I, my first Swans record I ever listened to was To Be Kind. I thought it was The Seer, but it was actually To Be Kind that I was listening to. And um, I, did, I, I guess I just missed The Seer. But then so when we started to plan this out, I kind of went, you know, in, in order and listened to, to Filth. And, you know, I thought it was actually pretty cool. You know, the songs were like shorter, I think, and less sprawling, kind of very repetitive, like you had mentioned, Dan. Um, but then when I got to like yeah soundtracks for the blind like i i'm i'm not kidding there were like a couple of moments where i had looked down and i'm like am i listening to the same band and you know so i got real interested in like what you know what is what's been going on and tried to read up on their history and it and, and it seemed like they changed band members for like every single record and i you know i don't know i was just very i found it all very confusing so when you say that there's like two versions of the band to me, it seems like every album had like some sort of different lineup or something. Is that is that true? Uh, yeah. I mean, there's different lineup. Like I said, uh, the only person besides Jira that is kind of always there is Norman Westberg. Otherwise, the only other person who was in it for a long time is Jarbo, which is the uh, the the female voice that you hear a lot on uh, soundtracks for the blind. Um, right. The, the one that ruins uh, the album from being perfect uh, because <laughs> Yum Yab Killers is fucking awful, um, and that's <laughs> that's all Jarbo's doing. And uh, well, well, let me let you know if you don't already. I was really surprised to see on Rate Your Music that Soundtracks for the Blind is by a, a decent margin the highest rated Swans record. Is that surprising to either of you guys? No, because it was like a Mew meme for a while. <laughs> well, it it kind of it kind of was for me on um, all music. They also had said the same thing because they said that you know Gerard was announcing the end of the band. They were going to go on a tour, and then they're like they. So then they decided to release their best album at that point. So I was I was pretty surprised because I think that was um, was my my least favorite actually. What surprised me about that is that it's so hard to like. I mean, yeah. you almost cannot help but be impressed by the seer and to be kind i think will hook literally any lover of music but soundtracks is baffling i mean it feels like i don't know the history that well but you know if this is the last album before the retirement period that it's just like a dumping ground for everything unused is that am i right on that dan uh no kind of kind of kind of not really he just like wanted to make it's supposed to be a soundtrack for a non-existent film and that's where the blind part comes from so it just kind of is like purposely written that way as far as i know um but it it is like kind of mishmashy like uh yum yab killers is a like live recording uh and then volcano is like this weird uh like sort of like disco dance track just shoved in the middle there but i mean besides those two songs like everything is great i mean i was a prisoner and your skull is like gotta be one of the best songs ever and gotta be one of the like best usage of a sample you know as much as i love godspeed like you know and their samples are great but like that prisoner in your skull one is just um, amazing and uh it does sound like like proto godspeed yep. or you yeah know. that's exactly what i was thinking yeah of. i i honestly i like kind of wonder if they you know if that's just coincidence or if they just were very um uh inspired by that because it the the timelines are so close you know um soundtracks comes out in 1996 and um uh f sharp a sharp is not much um later than that yeah i mean it does feel like it exerts a, a pretty massive influence and i believe that this newer incarnation of swans will as well it's just there hasn't been enough time yet but you know this they've reached heights in popularity that they never had before but when you listen to soundtracks you know to me it is like the most fascinating endlessly fascinating because yeah every piece does now that you say that kind of play like a little snippet of a soundtrack except for it's almost like it it doesn't feel like the same film. Like hmm. it feels like an entirely different world on each track. Well, that's, and... that's why it's soundtracks for the blind. Each yeah. one is its right, own right. film. Well, it's, it's amazing for that. I mean, it's like just incredible how much there is in here. And, you know, you can really sense that people like Godspeed. I have no doubt were listening closely to this kind of stuff. And, you know, post-rock, 
people don't talk enough about this, but Swan's influence on post rock, you know, has got to be massive. Uh, and just experimental music in general, music that, you know, that kind of found like music concrete stuff is all over this. And it just like does it better than anybody else, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think each of their periods uh, kind of have like a massive influence, you know, filth era, uh, just that like crushing um, industrial. So I feel like they, you know, if they didn't create industrial music, they definitely were the ones that did it the best. And then, you know they do it again with um soundtracks for the blind for post rock and even the stuff in the middle the whole like uh it's kind of that like gothic uh uh folky type but still rock uh you know that that has a massive influence and then like you said the uh, current stuff um i think it it definitely will and we'll see that in the coming years uh dan where where exactly were they located during most of their career? Because it seemed like what I was reading that they, they were really popular for a long time in Europe before they kind of got a big following in America. Um, well, I mean, they were part of the no wave scene, which was in New York City. Like Thurston Moore was actually one of the original members of the band. He played bass, um, not for what? very long. They were good friends with uh, Sonic Youth. The Glowing Man, actually, um, the world looks red, the world looks black. It uses lyrics from uh, the Sonic Youth song. So yeah, they were in yeah, that, I heard that. Yeah, so they were in that scene in New York. Um, they might have had some luck in europe and stuff because jira has this like crazy story he basically like leaves home at a very young age goes to europe ends up in uh israeli prison uh for selling drugs at the age of like 15 and uh he speaks like german and stuff there's a swan's album that is uh ep that's just in german so yeah i think they did kind of have a bit of um a go in europe but uh new york is kind of the center that's what's um so weird about them though is that they've been like an intense cult band I, from what i gather uh basically their entire career and yet now they i don't think they qualify as cult anymore because with the seer and to be kind they've become so massively popular and important like in the indie world so i want to ask you know darren as somebody who's less familiar and then dan to contrast you know is the current incarnation of swans the best incarnation of swans i mean i i would say so only because the the distance between filth and soundtracks for the blind seems like like a, it seems like a huge gap between those two records and i know there was a lot of things that they released between there and i just i haven't listened to it i'm assuming dan probably has so he could probably touch on that better but i mean i i like the current swans you know it's it's really kind of strange trying to listen to this band that was like releasing records so many years ago when really they sound like a fresh like new band now like they don't sound as if as old as they actually are does that make sense like if you were to think about a lot of bands that were releasing records that long ago and then they continue to really release records today, you know, usually there's a, there's a noticeable difference either in their style or approach. But I mean, when I listen to the, to the recent records, I don't think of them as like this aging band or anything like that. No, I mean, that's a good point. They don't act as like an age. They don't sound like an aging band, which is crazy because Jira is like in his sixties. Um, <laughs> oh my God. I see. I didn't even. Yeah. Uh, sense. yeah. He's, he's in his sixties, you know, so he's pretty old, but, uh, to still just be like on that, like absolute vanguard is like, is, is amazing. But to answer Gabe's, uh, original question. Yeah. I kind of do think that this incarnation is the best one. Uh, I love pretty much every Swans album, but yeah, this one's the best. I mean, you know, the whole no wave era, awesome, great, but it's not something you want to like listen to all day. Uh, in fact, like just the other day I was, uh, just going through discography, listening to things and like, it's kind of hard to listen to filth and then uh, like young God EP and then cop and greed, holy money, all that. It's like, it's too punishing. You, you can't just <laughs> listen to it all day. And then the, the middle period, a lot of people like really love that, but that's, that's my, my least favorite. But then th this is a new incarnation, uh, so great i mean this trilogy amazing and then like i said uh, at the start my father will guide me up to a, uh, a up a rope to the sky just like people seem to just completely forget this album 
Um, and it is like short. It's only one one disc, and uh, you know, only forty four minutes long. Uh, but it's like fantastic as well. But it's still like very close to Angels of Light. It's like he hasn't really uh, became a whole new uh, band until, uh, the seer. So yeah, I guess like from the seer to glowing man probably is the best incarnation of swans. Yeah. I mean, I just think that they're reaching, if it was even possible, you know, they're just reaching even further, uh, in this current incarnation or at least, uh, did for the last couple albums, uh, now that they are ending this incarnation, but, uh, it's just the ambition is, incredible i mean just mammoth mammoth songs with just the all the energy in the world i mean per track um to me it's endlessly impressive but um you know lou here to try to answer him is just to say yeah that straight up basically everything uh that swans did is equally worth checking out but uh you know if you're looking for a place to start i really don't think you can go wrong just starting with something like the seer or to be kind and you know, jumping around like I think all of us have. Yeah, I think at, my recommendation would be to be kind as the uh, purveyor of swans here. That's probably yeah. a good good idea. Dan, I have one quick question. You've yeah. seen them live. Um, do they still kind of perform the way they, the way the, I guess a lot of their historical uh, accounts have been? Yeah, it's pretty fucking intense. Like, it is loud as shit. Like, it like you can f- it's not sun loud but it's pretty damn close like it you can feel it in your chest and uh Jira, i haven't i've seen him twice and both times he's at least yelled at one light man and one sound man i've seen him <laughs> uh a uh, uh, roadie put a beer too close to his guitar cord and it fell over so he uh kicked it at him um which was cool i've seen him swap people's cell phones out of their hands uh he's still pretty intense (laughs) for being 60 whatever years old so yeah if i mean if swans come around your uh, town on this last tour uh you should definitely uh go and don't put your hands on the stage (laughs) 